Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. So I know it's been a long time since I've done videos and I've been doing them infrequently and I do apologize for that. Um, some of you may have seen that I did a video a little while back about what happened with Sweet Pea and the crash. Um, I did have to take that video down as advised by my lawyer until after I've attended court and everything. So um, until that's all done and over with, um, for those of you who seen it, you knew it went on. Uh, for those of you who didn't, you're just gonna have to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned because I will repost that video as soon as uh, everything is all sorted out in a legal sense. Uh, that being said, let's get into the meat of today's video. So I'm gonna give you a bit of an update um, of what all mechanic like happened to Sweet Pea from that extent and the repairs that need to be done on her. So I'm gonna give you a quick view right now of what she's looking like. <laughs> For the victory lap though Whoa, whoa They ain't never seen nothing like this before Lit the room when I came through the front door Ask me if I should suffer come What for? Train in the trees please Right, so that's kind of uh, what we're looking at here with Sweepy So I'll go over a bit of it uh, mechanically repairs what need to be done uh, the luckily the frame was not bent and uh, nothing was actually pushed into the engine enough to cause any damage to the engine she does actually still run uh, however uh, both of the belts snapped so my power steering water pump alternator none of that is actually getting powered by the engine right now so if i do drive her i can't drive her very far because i don't want her to overheat otherwise i will have some serious engine problems on my hands other than that uh right now so what i'm going to need to replace is the driver's side front fender i'm going to need to replace the uh whole front grill and clips and everything for that the hood um, other than that I will also need to replace the radiator for sure and potentially the water pump uh, we don't know for sure because we haven't actually started taking her apart um, but that's kind of where we're at with that uh, however the accident did happen on Vancouver Island and uh, I was there um, just visiting I had intended on only being there for maybe another couple weeks and then I was going to be heading back to the mainland. However, the accident happened on October 30th. And I kind of got stuck on the island because I couldn't just drive her back. Um, and so I did have a friend on the island who let me stay at his place. Uh, he rents a, a little house kind of on a small acreage just uh, south of Nanaimo. So I did stay there. Um, and I will show you a little bit of what the weather was like on the island this winter. I think it snowed for the entire month of December and anyways long story short in order for me to get Sweet Pea back to the mainland I basically had to get her out of the snow so uh, what ended up happening is um, the actual landlord of the property he was removing snow on one of his other properties so he did pop over to our property and clear the snow up to where my RV was parked I had to hand shovel the rest of it so uh and then of course because she doesn't have great brakes right now from what happened uh, i was backing her up but of course i had to go like full speed so that i didn't get stuck in the snowbank behind me but then what happened is i couldn't brake and i got stuck in the snowbank behind that snowbank so 
Uh, I ended up having to dig myself out of that, which took about an entire day. And then uh, I was able to drive her forward so that the tow truck driver could simply back in, hook her up, and take her to the mainland. So uh, just in case anyone ever comes across a situation like this where your home is stuck on the island and you need to be on the mainland because that's kind of where home is, uh, what I ended up doing is I used my BCAA and that covered my toe from where my RV was to the kind of where the ferry is and then from the other side it towed it to where I wanted it to be towed. I did have to pay, now there's two options that you can take when you have to bring your uh, home on wheels across uh, from the island to the mainland. One option is to pay for the tow truck driver to take it onto the ferry. However, when you do that, you are paying for the tow truck driver's ferry fees for him and his vehicle both ways. And on the way there, you're also going to pay for the, the length of your home on wheels. And then you are also paying for all that tow truck driver's time while he's waiting for the ferry, on the boat, waiting for the ferry on the way back, and on the boat. So it ended up, uh, the quote was that it was going to cost me $2,000 in order for me to send it with the tow truck driver on the ferry. The other option, however, was for me to send it on a C-SPAN barge, which is what I ended up doing. And it ended up costing me $350 to send her on a C-SPAN barge. It did not come at the same time as me, so uh, be prepared for that. You may be homeless for, um, I was only homeless for one night, but I say homeless, but really it wasn't because uh, thank you rolling through reality for uh, taking care of me like you always do and hosting me and my beautiful little puppy uh, for a night while we waited for our home to arrive. So that being said, that's another thing that I want to show you. So we have a new member of the Mountain Baby family. Her name is Ruby. She is a, her mother was a Husky Wolf Cross and her father is a German Shepherd Rottweiler. So she is a very interesting breed mix. She's very intelligent, loves to play, loves to work like a German Shepherd, but she also likes to nap like a Rottweiler. So for me, she's like the perfect mix because, you know, I like to do something for an hour and then I want to go have a nap for an hour. So um, she's a perfect, she's a perfect breed mix for me. But uh, I'm going to give you a little uh, slideshow here of Ruby from when I got her at eight weeks and she is now 16 weeks old and she's big. Her paw is almost the size of my palm. Okay, so she's going to be a big dog, which is okay with me because nobody's going to mess with me when I got an enormous German Shepherd Husky ready to like tear their throat apart if they touch me. So I'm okay with that. I wanted a dog for protection, but I also wanted her for uh, just emotional support and a companion. And she's great at all of the above. So let's take a look at Ruby from when I got her to now. recently 
I know that I didn't really post much in fall. I was just kind of taking a bit of a break from uh, social media and YouTube and everything. I was just feeling a little overwhelmed with everything. So uh, I did take a bit of a break there. Uh, but I'm getting back at her and I'm going to be releasing my actual schedule of the videos, what you can expect on what day. Uh, I'm going to have uh, live videos and uh, I'm going to have some cooking videos. So like every Wednesday, let's cook together. Let's make dinner together. I'll release the recipe in advance. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, again, mountainbaby.vanlife, because that's where I'm going to release the recipe that we will cook on Wednesday in the video. And then on Fridays, I'm going to do a live. I want to do, it's going to call, be called Fox Fridays, and it's going to be frequently asked questions about living van life, living as a nomad, uh, experiences etc that I often get when I am traveling as a single female in a vehicle I know it's going to be completely different than probably questions that men get when they're traveling uh, solo in a vehicle uh, there's a stigma around women traveling in a vehicle that it's more dangerous but in my opinion it's dangerous for anyone wherever you're living however you're living um, you know, we all have to be aware out there in the world. So uh, I'm going to cover some of those questions that I often get asked as a single female living on the road. So that's going to be on Fridays and on Wednesdays. We're going to get cooking and we're going to heat things up a little. Talk to you all soon. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and follow me on Instagram, mountainbaby.nomad. And if you do want to follow Ruby, she is on TikTok called Ruby the Roddy.